So we're going to talk today our common core standards F, which stands for functions, uh, IF7E, which is to graph exponential functions showing intercepts and end behavior. All right. So how do I know this is a exponential function? It's really easy. The x is in the exponent. It's that easy. It's an exponential because the x is in the exponent. So let's go ahead and first um, let's get our values. So I'm just going to use my calculator. Clear. I'm going to go, all right, 3. And I use my E button, E to the, do you see where I got the E to the power? It's right by the 7 and the 4, E to the power of 0.5 times, let's plug in negative 3, and I get an answer of about 0.7, okay, about 0.7. Okay, I'll do the 2, I'll go 3, and I'll plug in to E, all right, with me, E to the 0.5 times, negative 2, and I get an answer of about 1.1, 1 .1, all right, I'm just plugging it in. Does the point 5 come for, from the point? Yes, yes, oh, yes. I just, just thought that was a 5 or Yeah. 3, and I'm going to go e to the 0.5 times negative 1, and I get an answer of about 1.8. So it's slowly getting bigger, isn't it? Uh, 0, I don't need to plug in 0. I know that's going to be 3 because anything is 0 power is 1, and 3 times 1 is 3. I can do that without a calculator because we're pretty smart. Uh, 3, and then I'm going to go e to the... 0.5 times 1, right? And I get an answer of about 4.9. It's getting bigger. And then I'll do my 3. And I'm going to go my E button. You guys are all seeing where my E button's coming from, right? My E, 0.5 times 2. I get an answer of about 8.1, maybe 8.2. And then finally I'll throw in the 3, and I'll go 3. And I'll go my e to the 0.5 times 3. And I can answer about 13.4, OK? Now, if we're going to graph this, I know I've got to go up to 13.4. So I might go maybe 5, 10, 15. I'll go 1, 2, 3. And I'll go negative 1, negative 2, and negative 3. And so if I just do a dot by dot, and then we'll try and put in the graph the best we can. Uh, 0.7, maybe about 1.1. It grows gradually, but pretty soon it's going to grow pretty well. That's why it's exponential, right? 3 might be here, uh, 4.9. And you're going to hopefully see a nice curve, uh, 8.2, and then 13. Now, some people describe it as a J shape. But what I want you to see more than anything in this graph is how the slope continues to increase. I'll say that again. How the slope or how the steepness of the graph increases. So if I were to try and connect the dots, you'll see that it gets steeper and steeper and steeper. So what happens is it's continuously growing. Its rate is increasing. Does that make sense? Its slope is increasing. That's what makes it exponential, OK? All right, now, what about domain and range? Well, domain can be described in two ways. One, it could be described how wide the graph is, but that's a little deceiving here because it looks like it ends at 3. But another way to describe domain is what are all the possible values of x? So I could plug anything in, can't I? I mean, I could just plug anything I want. So the domain can be anything. There's no restrictions. I mean, I can let x be any value. I'm not going to worry about dividing by 0. I'm not going to worry about taking the square root of a negative number. So the domain really is all real numbers, OK? So domain x equals all real numbers. But what we just saw earlier is that it will never reach a height of 0, right? So if it never reaches a height of 0, its range has got to be from, from 0, not including 0, but up. So my range is going to be y is greater than 0, OK? It will never reach 0 unless you can get to infinity, OK, which is impossible. Now, let's do the same thing with example two. Okay, now it's an exponential function, but real quickly, before we do example two, you've got a negative x here. Any guesses? Any guesses what it's going to look like? Go yeah, I'm going to go down. It's not upside down, but this one's going to be exponential decay. So this one's growth. You'll, let's put growth. That's exponential growth. And this one is going to be decay, okay? So Simon's totally right. 
Um, another way to do this is you can graph it on your calculator and we'll just use our trace button or a table to get the values. So let's just do this a little differently. I want to show you another way to do this. Clear. I'm going to go my 4, my e to the power of a negative x. Okay, see what I've got? So I'm just going to graph this thing. Let's clear that. Make my window fit what I think it should fit. And so if I go to my window, let's go negative 4 to 4 because I, I'm asked to do negative 3 to 3, right? And then I know my y. We already talked about the fact that it cannot be 0, right? And then um, I know I've got a 4 here. So I'm going to go a little bit higher. Maybe let's go 20 and let's just graph it and see what it looks like. Okay. Okay, Simon said it goes down. I agree, it does. It does go down. Let me show you. It does go down. Oh, uh, how about right there? Now you can see it. So this one's exponential decay. So if I go to trace, and if I go to my negative 3, I get a value of about 80, okay? So this is 80. Isn't this a little easier than plugging it in? Told you I'd show you another way. Uh, negative 2. I'm at about 29.5. Oh, negative. Just put that in the I sure did. Now I'm just using my trace button. Negative one. I get about a, a ten point, about eleven. Zero. Well, I can do zero in my head. That's four, because anything is zero. Power is one. Times four is four. Uh, one gives me a one point five. Two gives me a point five, and then. 3 gives me a, about a point 0.2. So yeah, the last time I plugged every one of these values in for x, right, and evaluated, plugged it in, plugged it in. But in this case, I thought, wait a minute, there's got to be a faster easy way to do it. So I graphed it, right, got the equation, and then I used my trace button. You can also use a table to get these values, right? But at any rate, um, if I go, let's see, how about 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, there's my 80, right? All right, and then I'm going to have my 1, 2, 3, negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, right? And then, um, let's see, way up here at 80, right? Dot way up there, negative 2, about 29. It drops pretty quickly, doesn't it? Negative 1 is about 11. 0 is at 4, um, 1 is at 1.5, and of course it just gets smaller and smaller, okay? So again, some kids describe the shape as a J. It's really an exponential decay. So this one's exponential. Technically it's like a lowercase L because there's no recurve. Okay, I'll go along with that. Uh, exponential decay because it's going down, right? You're getting less and less and less, okay? Like a half-life. Right. Domain, exactly, half-life. Half-life, this is a great example of half-life, isn't it? What is the half-life We're going to study that. Everything has a different half-life, right? What was the half-life of this one? Uh, the half-life of this one? Oh, boy, it's pretty close to... Pretty close to a little under a second or a little under one, right? Oh, is that what it is? Yeah. This is also like ion entries. Yeah. Like point, instead of point to rest, just like. Yeah, it's dropping off. Okay, domain, what do you guys think about the domain? Yep, Jose is right. You guys agree with all real numbers? Yeah. Right? Range, what's range going to be? Totally agree. Totally agree. And we can draw in the horizontal asymptote if we want to, okay? There's the horizontal asymptote, okay? All right, not too bad. Okay, ready to turn the page? So, example three. An infectious disease spreads from 10,000 people and spreads per day of the following formula. Okay, now what happens is that we've got an E equation but it's in the denominator. So what's going to happen is this. This is a real life equation because like most diseases, they spread quickly, right? But then after a while, people start to get well. Um, there's vaccinations and the population will start to once again level off. So to graph this, 
Let's go straight to putting in the calculator. Okay, let's go straight to 10,000 divided by. And don't forget parentheses. Absolutely, I have to have parentheses in my equation, right? Because I need all of this to be in the denominator. Okay, so I get divided by parentheses. Let's go 5 plus 1,245. Go to my E button. Go to my E button. E to the power of X. We'll go negative point nine seven and we'll go x okay close parentheses okay now i don't know what window to put but i'm pretty sure that with this ten thousand could be an initial population um let me change my window oh let's change that to how many days do you think a virus could spread seven, seven days okay i'll go seven more of that um how many people do you think we had ten thousand people right Eight. Uh, eight, eight maybe at a min, but how about uh, eighty thousand? Why not? Thank you. Um, let's graph this. See what happens. Okay. I'm just gonna line. Okay. Now I'm not seeing it, am I? So I'm way too big, probably. I'm like. Wow. All right. I'm at like one in ten for my window. I still got nothing. Okay, so what I've got is a little bit of a level off here. Let's go back to when I'm not going to do eight, um, but I might try 500. Uh, oh, there's, oh, too big. Window. Let's try 2,000 maybe. That's not a bad window. Let me go more days than seven, though, Ryan. Ryan, how about if I go 50 days? You okay with that? Oh, yeah. Let's go better window. Let's go 25 days, and let's make this like 2,500. There we go. There's a graph I want. Okay, everybody with me? Okay. So watch. So if I look at this darn thing. What did you do for your window? Now? Yeah, check my window out, and I'll write it on the board here. Here's my window. Um, I went on my x's. I went x's. I went from negative 4 to 25. And on my y's, I went from 0 to 2,500. Okay, and there's my window. And then this is the graph I got. Okay, now tell me about that graph. Tell me about that graph. What do you see? I see a rocket So think about the 24-hour flu, okay? You get sick fast, don't you? Um, and then it spreads like crazy. Everybody gets sick. And then pretty soon it just levels off, right? Um, that's what's happening here. So let's answer from our calculator. Let's answer some of these questions, okay? Find the number of people affected in one day. How can I do that? One day. How about how many people affected at t equals zero? Let's go trace. Um, trace zero. Okay, eight people. Ryan, you got the eight right. Eight people were infected. So what happened is eight people came to school. Okay, eight people came to school, sick, and got us all sick. Okay, eight people came to school. How did I get that? I just used my trace button. How about one? Trace one, enter. About 21 people. So after one day, I've got 21 people. After two days, let's check it out. Trace two, 54 people. And after five days, probably, oh, it's 678. So people are getting sick, aren't they, fast, right? Now, I know eight is here, right? And the graph kind of goes like that, right? It levels off, doesn't it? It levels off. So what's this value here that it levels off at? 678. Let's check it out. Let's keep going with my trace button, all right? Okay, I'm just going to motor along on this graph here. Technically it should what am I at? What's my y value? 
What's my y value? Yeah. You guys agree it's going to level off about 2,000? So you can only have 2,000 people sitting at the time? Right. Right, so what happens is it could very well be our entire school population. Well, it's like one person Maybe. So it levels off to about 2,000. That's my end behavior, right? So what's a real life situation? It could be. Like I said, a rocket goes into orbit and then it stays level. Well, let's just say it's a cruise. Well, let's take something like a cruise boat, okay? No, a cruise boat. A cruise boat. And by like the, well, by the fifth day, by the tenth day, most everybody on the boat is sick, right? Like cruise ship, cruise boat, whatever. All right. Now, we will um, finish these up real quick tomorrow. This will be our warm-up. I'll show you how to do this. But as far as homework, I'm going to change this. I will change this real quick. I think the bell rings in about two minutes. So let's give it to 341.